Good morning and welcome to Bethel Baptist Church's 9 a.m. <clears throat> daily devotion. This morning I'd <clears throat> like to talk about the subject <clears throat> of your soul. And so the most important thing is your soul. And so we're going to be looking at the importance of man's soul this morning. So if you take your Bibles <clears throat> and turn over to the book of Mark, chapter 8 and verse 36. Scripture here declares, For what shall it profit a man <clears throat> if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And then in Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 16, For what is man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? Luke chapter 12 and 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall these things be which thou hast provided? And so I want to give you the definition of a soul based on Scripture. <clears throat> it's referenced... Uh, 5315 in the Strong's Concordance. And in the Old Testament, the word, the Hebrew word is nepesh, capital N-E-P-H-E-S-H. -E -E and it means a breathing creature, a soul, life, person, heart. And so the biblical definition is all that is within a person. That's what your soul is. Psalms chapter 103, verse 1, a psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The Hebrew compares, contrasts, <clears throat> the inner self and the outer appearance, or as viewed in a different context, what is to oneself as opposed to to what one appears to be to one, one's observers. The soul of man, that immaterial part, which moves into the afterlife, needs atonement to enter into God's presence upon death. And we realize that the body is buried and decomposes. And I wanted to share... Not to get off track because we're looking at a soul here, but I wanted us to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 21. And listen to this. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? And so the animal kingdom and other types of creation outside of mankind have a soul as well but not a regenerative soul like mankind has because man was created in the image of God. And remember, the Bible says, <clears throat> Adam formed, or, or pardon me, God formed Adam from <clears throat> uh, the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And so, <clears throat> I also wanted to uh, share this verse here if I can find it. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 39. <clears throat> all, fle all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beast, another of fishes, and another of birds. And so, <clears throat> as I was preparing this message and re-studying it, uh, because I've, I've preached it a few times now, uh, back in March of uh, 04, and, uh, and, and now uh, today, Lord willing that it gets posted. And so, I want you to really listen to this because... Uh, this is astounding to me, <clears throat> and uh, I, I did quite a bit of research and quite a bit of study, 
And what I'm about to say and quote the scripture is truth. And so you can check it out on, on your own if you'd like. And I made sure that I knew what I was definitely talking about when it came to this. And so I want to make the statement that our God has a soul as, as well. And we realize that God is spirit and that God is light, but God also has a soul. Listen to what it says in Psalms chapter 11, verse 5. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And when you see that in the King James Bible, I've taught this several times. It's referring to Jehovah God the Father. And so this word Lord capitalized here in Psalms 11 verse 5 means the existing one. So God is the existing one. The Lord is the existing one. Now listen to the verse. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. In other word, words, the soul of God. And so you can study that on your own. So I thought that was interesting, and, and I wanted to bring that out this morning. <clears throat> I've taught different areas of subjects on this in the past, and uh, so... A lot of preachers will say that uh, the Trinity is a hard uh, doctrine in Scripture to understand. Uh, it isn't for me. I just take it at face value. The Bible says it. I believe it. And that's the end of it. And so, there, uh, of course, the Trinity is composed of the Father, who is Jehovah, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, or he's referred to as the Holy Ghost. And all three are one. And there's lots of uh, different areas of Scripture to back that up. And so I've also taught different subjects <clears throat> in the past in regards to this statement that man is also a trinity or a trichotomy. T-R-I-C-H-O-T-O-M-Y, meaning that there are three parts to, to man. A man has a body, has a soul, which is composed of his mind, will, and emotions. And he has the spirit within him that God placed at conception uh, into each individual, whether it's a man or a woman, or, or a male or a female that uh, God forms in the womb. And so man also is a trinity. And so <clears throat> um, the soul I, I mentioned is composed of the mind, the will, and emotions. And Man has a body, and the Spirit of God is placed in man as well. And so, <clears throat> when we look at this now, when we think about uh, man being a trinity, that in which there is life, um, and so when I'm talking about the soul of man now, I, I want to make the statement that man has life. Uh, there's, man is a living being. Uh, Within the soul is the seed of feelings, desires, affections, aversions. Uh, the human soul, insofar as it is constituted that by the right use of the aids offered it by God, it can attain its highest end and secure eternal blessedness. The soul regarded as a mortal being Design is designed by God for everlasting life. And so you can look these verses up on your own. 3 John 2 and 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. <clears throat> the soul as an essence which differs from the body and is not dissolved by death. And so when death, the physical death occurs of a man or a woman, or a male or a female that God has created. The body dies, but the soul never dies. The soul lives on for eternity. John, Job chapter 12 and verse 10. In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? 
Revelation chapter 16, verse 3, when it refers to the living soul. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead, of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. The souls of mankind is the only one that lives forever. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Acts chapter 2, verse 27, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Psalms chapter 49, verse 8. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceaseth forever. Psalms 49, 15. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me, Selah. That means meditate on this or think on these things. Psalms 139, 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. And so we see here in the next verse that I'm going to give you, in Lamentations verse, chapter 3, verse 20, that there are emotions and there, are, there is memory. So there's emotions within the soul and memory. Listen to what it says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 20. My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Isaiah 61.10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. And so you have to bear with me on this because I've got arrows shooting out all over the place and notes on the left and the right hand sides, right and sideways and all that kind of stuff. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now that word destroy, this is what it means. Loss not of being, but of well-being. Loss not of being, but of well-being. And then <clears throat> the word is metfa. Listen to this because here is a verse that proclaims that hell is a real, literal place. And right now, hell is in the center of the earth, according to Scripture. Metpha, M-E-T-A-P-H. And when we're looking at the word destroy here, when you check it out in the original Greek, this is what it means. To devote or give over to eternal misery in hell. And so... The most important thing that you have and that I have and that every man and woman have and every living person has is their soul. It never dies. And so, um, I've got, well, I've actually, I skipped down a little bit here. I, I have three other verses that I want to use before I close. The word of God pierces the very soul of man. In Hebrews chapter 4, 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit 
and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What needs saving? Hebrews 10, 30, For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. And so what needs saving? Our soul needs saving. If you want to go to heaven one day when you take your last breath, or the Lord comes back and takes the church out, then you need to have placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection, and accepted him into your heart and life as your personal Lord and Savior. And when you do that at that very second, that millisecond in time of true belief, of leaning your whole weight upon Jesus Christ, your trust in him, that he is God, that he took your sin, past, present, and future upon himself, that he died and was buried and rose again, praise God, on the third day for you, for me, and for whosoever will. If you'll believe that and accept that and accept Christ as your Savior, then you will have a regenerative soul and you will have a saved soul because your soul never dies. And when you take your last breath or Jesus comes back and takes the church out and you're sa if you are saved, you'll immediately be in the presence of the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, the scripture says. And so there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. The soul of man, listen to Acts 4.32. One soul and the mind. It says here, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. But I want you not to think so much about this one thing in common, which is true in Scripture, but now I want you to focus in on the word believed here in Acts chapter 4 and verse 32. Because believed means to trust in Jesus or God and that God is uh, able to aid either in obtaining or in doing something or in other words, saving your soul. And so that word believed is referring to having saving faith. And that's what you need in order to attain heaven one day. And so that's the message for this morning of how important your soul is to you. And God created you and me and every living person to live forever and to abide with him. And that's his desire. But because of the fall, when Adam, of his free will and free volition, and he broke and he was disobedient, it was disobedience that brought the curse to mankind. I believe that the command was given to Adam and possibly Eve wasn't even uh, created at that point in time that an Adam passed on this information to his wife. But the Bible clearly says, as for one man, sin entered the world, and death by sin and so on, but death passed in, and so death passed upon all men, in that all have sinned. And so it's because of Adam's sin that God had to bring about thorns and thistles and uh, pains uh, for women in childbirth and, and, and uh, bring about judgment and uh, had to, and, uh, had to send, because of his love, had to send his son, Jesus Christ, to leave the portals of the third heaven to come down here and take our sin upon himself and dry, die a cool, dr cruel death. And um, because God loves us and loves you so much. And remember this morning just how important your soul is. Hopefully, this message wasn't too deep and went, uh, you know, it just took off like a giant jet. Some of those jets can just sort of 
hovering and just take off. And so hopefully the scriptures that I gave this morning uh, were not too hard for us to grasp and understand. But remember, your soul is the most important thing that you have and you need to make the right decision. And that right decision based on what God has says, and God is the final authority and his word is the final authority, is to receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And once you've done that, you will protect your soul that lives forever. And you'll be able to lay your head, head down at night on your pillow when you go to sleep and have that perfect peace that passes understanding, realizing that you're saved, you're born again, and that Satan and no one can pluck you out of the hand of God. And when you take your last breath, you will be in the presence of Almighty God for all eternity. Lord, we give you thanks and praise now for uh, this devotion time. We ask that uh, you would help us to understand, Lord. I pray that you would watch over uh, all those that belong to you. And Lord, I pray for uh, those that might be watching uh, this uh, live stream message right now, Lord, that might not be saved and that you would give them the uh, understanding, Lord, that uh, they need to realize that they have a soul and their soul never dies and they need to do something with their soul. And Lord, if they want to spend eternity with you and with all that are in heaven, but especially with you, Lord, and those that may be saved of their relations or loved ones that have gone on before them, they need to secure their soul by asking Christ to save them. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.